Okay, uh, hello everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you all for joining and for watching this webinar. And I would like to thank to Francisco, uh, my coach and my lover friend, for inviting me to present in front of you, I mean, to present, to deliver this webinar. So in this webinar, we will, uh, I will talk about eight ways to move your database to Oracle Cloud. So um, I work as a team, as a database team manager at Azure Telecom. I'm from Azerbaijan and I am Oracle Certified Master and Oracle Ace Director. Uh, I also offer two books, uh, Arman Backup and Recovery and OCM 11J Study Guide. I also blogging at uh, kamranagayev.com and I'm president of Azerbaijan Oracle User Group. So if you, if you got uh, Oracle certifications, if you are OCA, it's time to upgrade your certification to OCP. And if you are OCP, the next step is to become an OCM, right? So um, I would like to encourage you to start your preparation right away for the Oracle Certified Master Exam because it's easy now, because you have, an, you have a study guide uh, for the OCM 11G pre exam preparation. If you, want to, if you want to know more detailed information on this book, you can visit ocmguide.com page and download a free PDF a book of, uh, that contains a few chapters uh, of this book and start your preparation right away. And please subscribe to my, uh, my web page uh, in order to get uh, weekly uh, exam-related updates uh, on your email. I've been blogging actually um, for more than a decade, and and uh, as I mentioned, a lot of a lot of DBAs uh, would like to. Uh, they mostly don't like. I mean, we don't like to read the long blog posts. We would prefer to have some blog posts that contain some uh, some screenshots. Uh, but it's better to have a video rather than having a screenshot, right? So that's why I decided a few months ago to uh, start a new web portal, Oracle Video Tutorials, for you guys and to post my, to share my experience and to explain uh, the Oracle database administration uh, with the video tutorials. So uh, I would like to have you on my web portal, subscribe and start learning Oracle Oracles by watching videos. I have a lot of I have, I have a lot of videos uh, related with different uh, techniques in Oracle, like Rack, ASM, uh, Standby Database, or Grid Infrastructure, or Busterware. And I have started two courses that will help you to uh, to become professional for in a specific area. The first one is about the backup and recovery, which will help you to uh, master uh, a backup recovery in Oracle and the second one is the preparation to OCM 11G exam. Every time when I deliver this presentation, I request a room survey. So whenever you migrate the data from one platform to a different platform or from on-premise to, uh, to the Oracle Cloud, I, I'm really interested how many of you already migrated on-premise database to Oracle Cloud, but, uh, but for now, I will not able to get, uh, to get your your feedbacks. So, uh, uh, answer what was the size of the migrated databases, or and uh, how did you have? Was it a few hours, or minutes, or seconds, or no downtime? So, uh, it, it really matters when you uh, downtime. Actually, really matters when you when you perform the the, the migration from on-prem database to Oracle Cloud, because then if you manage uh, critical uh, mission critical databases, uh, which which should be online twenty four uh, by seven. So you don't have an option to just shut down a database, take an arm and backup, or uh, to uh, to migrate it with that with a, with a downtime for a few hours. So in this case, uh, most of the time you will be asked to migrate database from on premise to cloud with minimal downtime. So, um, in, in this presentation, we will cover mostly eight 
ways to move your on-premise database to Oracle Cloud. First of all, we'll talk about using Data Pump. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have already done a lot of uh, the migrations uh, from using a Data Pump, but and I will not cover a Data Pump, uh, the, the basic Data Pump migration at all. Uh, uh, we'll talk about two of the new features that comes with data pump. Make your uh, migration to be fast. Then we'll talk about transportable table space migration, transportable table space apps. Uh, we'll talk how to duplicate database, how to create a standby database, and perform the failover. And we'll see how it works. Uh, and we'll see the difference between creating a standby database and duplicate database in terms of the migration. Then we'll move from ASM to ACFS, how to perform zero downtime migration using Golden Gate to uh, convert your single instance to rack. If, uh, I would like, uh, I mean, if you don't have, if you, if you haven't used uh, the Oracle uh, Cloud account, go and get one, okay? It's, I mean, you can get it for free and uh, you will get a one month trial account and, and start using Oracle Cloud database service or different services uh, and migrate some, some of your test database to Oracle Cloud. So it's very easy. Go to cloud.oracle.com and get your free account. And uh, in order to provision a, create, uh, the database service, uh, you have to choose the software release, you have to choose the software edition and the database type. So in this case, we we choose the Oracle 12 Series 2, Enterprise Edition and Single Instance. Uh, next, uh, in order to perform a secure connection, you have to create uh, public uh, as well as the private keys. So uh, use a, a key generator and create public and private keys. And the next way in it will be asked to provide SSH public key. So provide SSH public key and click next and a few minutes the database service will provide you with the IP address. And by using SSH client and by providing the private key that you have created here before, you will be able to uh, connect your computer. If you don't provide you will uh, connect the, uh, the compute node. So we provide a private key and we 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 are there. And is migrating the database with data pump. Um, if if it, actually you can use data pump to migrate the database from one platform to a different platform, from one version to a different version. The database size, if you can easily have a downtime or if you need to move on a specific schemas, right? Uh, but when you, I mean, you already know that when you when you export uh, the data, when you perform the export and create a dump file, uh, data pump export all lines, I mean, all data to the dump file. It takes a long time, right? So it will get uh, all data row by row, insert it to the dump file row by row, and then you have to move that dump file and import it, and it will import the data row by row. So it's going to take a long time. But um, it would be better to keep the data in the data files and export just the metadata, like you like. I mean, like you perform it in the transportable table spaces. But uh, in starting from Oracle 12C, you can do it on the data pump level. I mean, you can use the transport table option as well as with along with the, with along the full option and perform full database export, keeping data in the data files. If you try to use transport equals always and in Oracle PNG, you will get a known parameter named transport table error. If it's tried in Oracle, uh, you will get error saying function transport table is not supported in full jobs. But if you try to use parameter with along the full parameter in Oracle 12C, uh, the data pump will export only metadata of the whole database and will give you a list of the data files that should be moved to the target, the cloud instance, and that should be plugged in. Okay. 
So um, let's sample. So let's let's take that we have um, we have three table spaces and a table in each table space, and we want to want to move all these table spaces from on premise to the Oracle Cloud. The first option, I mean, the first step that we have to perform is to put the table spaces in, in read only mode, right? So we put the table spaces in read only mode. If you don't put the table space in read only mode, you will get error saying table space blah 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 is not read only. So we put the table space in read only mode, and from that point, the bound time will start. Export the dump file using transport table equals full equals y means export uh, the metadata of the whole database and keep all data in the data files. I will remove. I will copy the data files to the cloud machine and just plug them to the database. So uh, and here is that uh, in a few minutes or in a few seconds, that the data will be exported in the dump file and you will be provided with a list of the data files that you have to move. But there's a there's a problem with the user's case actually, actually because uh, when, you, when you create a new database service and want to move your own premise to the Oracle Cloud, uh, that database is already con user stable space. So uh, the, the database, the cloud database, already contains user stable space, and you want to move your the, the user stable space from the on premise and plug it in. So it is not possible, and you will get an error saying table space users already exists. So in this case, you think that okay, I can I can exclude it during the uh, during the import. Right? So the metadata provide a list of the data files and don't provide uh, the user table space data file and it, and, and received only three. In this case, um, I mean, the, the, actually the, the metadata contains information about, about the four data files or spaces but you provide only basis. So in this case, it, it won't work. So they all excluded during the export. Exclude it, export, and make sure before excluding it, excluding it uh, outside from the user's table table space. Uh, exclude it and import. Uh, at the end, migration checks by querying the DBA objects, see that if you and see that if all objects are moved to the cloud database successfully. Uh, the, uh, the next option is to use transport table databases and table spaces option. Uh, so uh, perform the transport table table space migration the first thing that you have to do is to check the Indian format for both uh, source and target databases uh, so query video transport table platform view and check the Indian format then you have to perform this table space self contained check um, so uh, actually I mean Sometimes you might fail to transport. I mean, uh, there are some prerequisites in order to uh, use the transport table tailspace option. So, uh, and the transport set check uh, function actually uh, perform a self-contained check uh, against the table spaces that you are going to migrate to transport. So, for example, you might have an you might have a table uh, the, the the partition table, and half of the partitions might reside on the on one table space and another half might reside on a different table space so in this case you are not able to move one table space uh, using the transport table table space option because it contains only half partitions of, of the table space so you have two choices either you have to exchange a partition and move all partitions to one table space or move both table spaces okay together so then you perform then you query transport set violations view and if there is no row selected then you are ready to transport a table space. The next option is to put a table space in read only mode, and it means the downtime, right? So up to that up to that point, we didn't have a downtime. Now we have a downtime. Next, we perform it. Uh, the ex 
export of the metadata of uh, of the objects of that table space, copy the old data files and export dump file to the cloud host, take out source table space from the read-only mode. Um, if you if you are moving from one platform to a different platform, you have to convert a data file. Provide a two platform or float from platform uh, options and convert data files either on uh, on the on premise or on the, on, the, on the Oracle Cloud host. And then use MTP to import uh, the table spaces uh, to the target database. So actually, there are best practices that you, that you can use uh, with the transport table table space option. The first one is uh, it's better to perform a data log conversion on a system with a better I.O. So what does it mean? I mean, uh, you might have uh, uh, an on-premise database with limited hardware resources, right? So uh, when you decide to move that database to the Oracle Cloud Machine, uh, you might need to convert some data files from one platform to a different platform. and uh, and you and in this case you are not able to uh, to upgrade the, the hardware resources on your on-premise database. You have only 16 gigabyte RAM and one CPU, and the hardware is old, and you are not able to upgrade it. So uh, in this case, it's better to move all data files to the cloud machine to the compute node, add a lot of resources, add the res as much resource as you as you can or as you want, add a lot of CPU, 4, 6 CPU, add uh, extra RAM, and perform the conversion on the cloud machine with a, with a better I.O. and with a better hardware resources. So it's better to run the, the data well conversion in parallel, use all nodes in the right environment. I've seen a lot of uh, cases where the DBA was taking a backup of the database uh, that was running on four node rack and was opening on a single channel to a single node. So it's better to open four channels to each node and backing up database using 16 channels rather than one channel. So make sure to use all nodes in the rack environment and I will show you how, how you can do it in the next slides. It's better to perform it. I mean, you can perform the data file transfer and data file conversion simultaneously uh, while copying the data files to the network to the cloud machine. You can start converting uh, the REST data files in the on premise after, con after copying the data file to the part of the data files to the cloud machine. You can start a conversion in the cloud and you can uh, start copying uh, the, other, the, the other data files, the REST data files. So it's better to talk to your net, uh, to your system admins and network admins to set network parameters for optimal transfer capacity, or and you can. Uh, it's better to resize data files to high watermark before the transfer. I've, I've seen a lot of cases where uh, DBA uh, added. I mean, uh, uh, there, I ordered the database. Uh, the database size well, a few few months ago. The database size was uh, five terabytes. And the backup size was uh, 300 gigabyte. So uh, we were trying to to restore and recover the, the backup from the Armand backup. And I thought that there's something wrong with the backup because it's it's not possible to have uh, that small backup uh, for five terabyte database. And I checked the log file of the Armand backup, and it was okay to compose successfully. So then I realized that the DBA added a lot of data files to different table spaces in order to make his life easier. And uh, all of the data, most of the data files, I mean, more than 90% of the data files were empty. So, uh, and Arma skipped to take backup of the uh, non allocated and empty data blocks. So that's why the size is small. So it's, it's Better to resize a five terabyte database up to 300 gigabyte and move the database and then add, I mean, or resize the data files back again. And it's better to compress data files before you transfer them. The next, uh, next step is, uh, or next option is to use cross platform database conversion. But uh, if you, uh, you can use this option only if you perform the migration uh, between the platforms that have the same Indian format. 
You cannot use this option to migrate database from storage to Windows uh, because they are not in the same Indian format. Again, we have to put the database in read only mode. And from this point, uh, the downtime will start. Then we use check DB, I mean, run check DB function uh, to check, uh, to perform uh, prerequisite checks and the database command in order to uh, create and provide the two platform, uh, use the two platform parameter and provide the platform, the destination platform of the database. It will create a transport transport script and we'll use this script, we'll move all, all data files, we'll use the script to create a new database in the cloud machine. So as you see up the methods, all migration options required uh, the downtime. So is it possible to migrate database with minimal downtime? Yes, it is. You can use cross-platform transport table table space with incremental backup option to convert or to migrate from one platform to a different platform with minimal downtime by using an incremental backups. So how it works? So let's imagine we have uh, an HP Wix database and we have a lot of table spaces or a single table space like, like TBS migration and the database is up, up and running and there are a lot of changes that are coming from users uh, to the database and we have a Oracle Cloud Machine uh, that is uh, running on the Oracle Enterprise Linux OS and we want to move the, this uh, table space to the to the to the cloud machine, so the table space size is ten terabytes. Okay, so what we do is we don't put it in read-only mode. We just take a from full incremental level of zero backup of that table space, and we transfer it to the cloud machine and restore it using our man. I mean five hours, right? So uh, during that five hours, we don't have we didn't have any any downtime. But there were a lot of changes happened during during this during the five hours. So that's why we take an incremental level one backup and transfer it to the cloud machine and recover it using our man. It's gonna take uh, a half an hour to, to back up to back up all the changes. We perform this step again. Uh, that, I mean, up that point that the incremental level one backup takes only a few seconds. So next, at the, at the end, we put a table space in read-only mode, which is going to take a few seconds. We take last incremental level one backup, which will take a few seconds. We export the metadata of the table space using the data pump and transfer the backup and the dump file. The cloud machine recover the backup and import the dump file, okay? So you can get more detailed information on these uh, techniques if you uh, check the following the, the mentioned metallic notes. So let's see how it works in a manual steps. Uh, so here we create a table space uh, and create a table on the table space and take incremental level zero backup. Then we make some changes on the table on, on, on the table and perform an incremental level one backup and move all backups to the cloud machine. So again, up to that point, we, we didn't have any downtime. Next, we, I mean, we restore, uh, a, there's a new command with, or in, that comes in Oracle 12C where you can perform the restore and convert operation in a running, running a single command. It is restore from platform command. So uh, we, we back up the database at HPUX we move the backup files to the cloud machine uh, that runs Oracle Enterprise Linux operating system, and we restore the HPUX backup uh, to the to the to the Linux operating system by running restore from platform command, and it will restore uh, the data files. Uh, and then we perform the recover. We run recover from platform command in order to apply the incremental backups uh, of the on-premise database to Oracle Cloud. And then at the end, we uh, put the table space in read only mode. We take the last incremental level one backup, which will take only a few seconds because it, contain, it, it will take uh, only the backup of the 
the last uh, the backup of the data blocks that were changed after the last incremental backup, and they are few. Uh, then we run XTP command in order to export the metadata of uh, of the table space, move the last incremental backup and dump files a cloud machine, uh, and then we can put the table space in read write mode. Reco run the recover from platform command to recover the last incremental backup. Uh, import the metadata, and here it is. We have we have the table space. The table space size was five terabyte, and it took only a few minutes to apply the license to uh, to put the table space in read only mode to apply uh, the last incremental level one backup and put the table space in read write mode. So uh, it is. I mean, you can you can do these manual steps when you are dealing with the small databases. But if you want to migrate a huge database, uh, you it's better to use the automation script that is provided by Oracle support. So check the following Metalink note and the Metalink note that I've pro provided in a previous slide, uh, and download Rman XTT convert script. So this script contains. The Perl scripts, I mean, this, this file contains the Perl scripts that uh, helps you to automate the whole process. If you deal with a, uh, with a huge database, and it means that you have hundreds or thousands of data files. So it's very hard to manage thousands of data files uh, in a table space mode, in a data file level. Uh, so it's better to use this automation script. Actually, there are, uh, it's, it's very easy to use. Uh, you run XTT driver Perl script and provide a backup config backup parameter. It will take a uh, it take a level zero backup. Then you run XTT driver restore command to restore that backup to the cloud machine. You provide a BKP ink parameter to take an incremental level backup and and so on. So uh, there's also a new feature that comes with Oracle 12C, which is called Perform Cross-Platform Database Transfer to Different Indian Platform with RMN Backup Sets. So, uh, so if you, the main problem is that you can uh, you can uh, you can take a backup of take an RMN backup and take a dump file. Of that table space that contains the metadata of the of the objects, uh, you run two commands, right? You run rman command and you run uh, the, the xpp command. So in Oracle 12c, you can do it with a single command. So again, we put the table space in read only mode. We take table space backup and a metadata dump file with just single command. Okay, this totally 12c new feature. Then we transfer the backup set to the destination server and restore RMN and data pump backup sets using single command again. So how it works, I mean, here we put the table space in read-only mode and take a backup uh, of the table space with along the metadata dump file by running backup to dump file from backup set. So it will restore the backup file and it will restore the dump file as well by running only a single command. So, uh, as you see, we put the table space in read only mode, but uh, I mean, it, it means that we should have a downtime, right? But still, we can use a low inconsistent in order to create uh, an incremental backups. And at the end, by skipping a low inconsistent parameter, we'll take the last incremental backup, we'll, we'll put the table space in read only mode, take the last incremental level one backup, and move the backup and restore it. Over it. First, we take a backup of the table space by running backup for transport command, and we use a low inconsistent and incremental level zero backup. It will take a backup of the table space, and then we restore it. Move the cloud machine and restore it. Next, we take uh, we take incremental level one backup, and again we use a low inconsistent option in order to uh, to make sure that we didn't put the table space in the region on the mod and we are doing everything online and it will allow us to take uh, the, an inconsistent backup. And at the end, we put the table space in the region only mod, we we use backup for transport incremental level one command, provide data pump name and move the 
uh, incremental backup with a dump file to the cloud machine and restore it by using restore foreign data file command. Then we will restore the dump file from the backup and we import the dump file to the database. Okay, uh, duplicating on-premise database to Oracle Cloud. Uh, next, uh, I should, I, let me let me change the power. I'm sorry, I have to. Uh, my batteries going to die, so I have to decrease it. Okay, sorry about it. Uh, next is duplicating on-premise database to the cloud. Uh, if you share the same uh, platform. Uh, you can duplicate the database to, or, uh, to, the, to, the, to the database to the Oracle Cloud. And there, there are different ways to duplicate to perform a disaster recovery of on-premise database to Oracle Cloud. You can do it by taking a backup and just transferring them to the cloud machine, or using backups. Uh, I mean, take a backup of the database uh, to the Oracle Public Cloud storage and restore that backup directly from the public cloud storage. Or you can uh, perform an active database duplication and uh, of the on-premise database to the Oracle Cloud. So the first, first one is, I mean, the first option is very easy and I'm pretty sure you have done it a lot of times. So what we do here, we just back up the on-premise database, copy the backup to the Oracle Cloud server configure the network parameters in both on-premise and on Oracle cloud machines and start the listeners, configure the TNS names or the listener order files. We create an in initialization parameter file and start the instance in no mount mode. And after that, we connect to the both primary, I mean, on-premise and, and uh, cloud databases, cloud instance, and run duplicate target database command and it will, it will duplicate the target database using the backups that already copied to the uh, cloud machine and we'll recreate the database. So th this option is very easy. I mean, uh, but sometimes you, uh, you, you might not be able to use this option because, of the, because you might not be able to, uh, you might not be able to have an, uh, the storage to, to store your, uh, the backups, Arman backups. So, Imagine that you have a huge database and you don't have a storage to store your Arman backups uh, and to to uh, to move them to the cloud machine. So in this case, it's better to use Oracle uh, cloud storage. So what we do is we download and install Oracle database uh, cloud backup module from the from the following link, and then uh, we install it. We install it and we take backup directly to the Oracle public cloud storage. So uh, download the zip file and extract it. Then make sure to create valid the, the folder for the valid and, lib and, and library files and, and run OPC install jar file uh, to install it. Uh, OPC means Oracle public cloud. So whenever you, uh, you get a Oracle public cloud storage, uh, you are provided with the identity domain that is unique for you. You are provided with a, with a public cloud account ID and a password file that all are uh, unique for you. Uh, during the installation, you provide all this information. And at the end, uh, the installation will create opc.ora file. OPC means Oracle public cloud configuration file. So this file is encrypted and contains information about your public cloud storage. About it contains the connection information about uh, it contains information how to connect to the Oracle public cloud storage. So next, what you have to do is to uh, configure the Armand channel, uh, Armand channel to SPT tape and provide the library file and provide the configuration file that was created before. Uh, Next, it's better to compress, enable the compression in our man and uh, encrypt the backups. And then run backup database plus our catalog command. When you run this command, our man will allocate a default channel to SPT tape and will use opc.ora file, the configuration file, and will connect directly to your Oracle public cloud storage and will take backups to the Oracle public cloud storage. 
Next, what you have to do is perform the same, same steps in the Oracle Cloud Machine, download the Cloud Backup module and install it on the Oracle Cloud Machine and start the database instance in no mount mode, allocate a new channels, allocate a new channel to the Oracle Public Cloud Storage by using the configuration file that was created in the previous step where you can create it uh, from the scratch by providing the same identity domain, user ID and password information uh, and restore and recover the database and open it. And the next step is uh, to perform an active database duplication of on-premise database to the Oracle Cloud. So it's very easy again. I mean, you have to configure the network and parameter files and password files in both on-premise and Oracle Cloud machines, run duplicate target database from active database command, uh, uh, use DB file name convert or log file name convert to convert the data file and log file names to a different, uh, to different name uh, and duplicate the own database online. So in this case, you don't back up, you, tend, you don't take the backup uh, uh, to your on-premise or to your Oracle Cloud, you just move online data files to the remote host, to the cloud machine. It will take some time, but uh, it works. So next is creating a standby database and performing failover. So why on earth, if we can duplicate the database, why on earth we need to create a standby database and perform the failover? So there's only one reason actually. <clears throat> uh, the reason is we have to make sure that we can perform, we can uh, perform uh, the switchover back again or uh, your migration might fail even after you open the database uh, to the, for, for, for the live, right? So you perform the migration to Oracle Cloud, you open the database, and after a few hours, you realize that, the, the, that, that there are some problems. I mean, network-related problems or hardware-related problems or different kind of problems that you are not able to proceed and you have to go back as soon as possible. In this case, you have uh, you have an option. I mean, you create a standby database in the cloud machine, you perform the switch over to the cloud machine, and then you perform switch over back to your on-premise database. You perform the switch over back to your on-premise database and, uh, uh, and then try to, uh, try to find out the solution uh, for the problems that you got in the Oracle cloud machine, solve this problem, perform the switch over back, see if it works if it works then then go with it if it if it seems that it didn't work so just switch over back again so uh, actually the steps are same but what i want to show you is you can use all rack instances uh to back up the database to back up uh, i mean to uh to, to back up the database so create a service using server control add service command and provide and provide the uh, name of all database node instances. Then start the service and connect to RMAN using by providing the service name. So in this case, if you open the channel to RMAN, it will uh, create the sessions, the channels in all nodes, in all available nodes. And after that, add standby log files, enable forced logging, and set the, create the network files in both uh, on-premise and Oracle Cloud, uh, it's better to uh, to disable the cluster interconnect uh, parameter and run duplicate touch database for standby from active database commands and provide the, uh, the, the parameter, uh, new parameter files and duplicate the database. It will create a standby database in the Oracle Cloud and you, then you perform the switch over uh, let's skip the slides as well. It's about the SP file and ASM. So next, uh, in the Oracle Cloud instance, uh, if you are, uh, if you provision the rack database, just use server control add database command uh, to add the, the database information. Use server control add instance command to add both instances and modify the database and specify that the role is physical standby. That the that the the database is a standby database and then start it in the in mount mode. And after that, perform the recover, stop the recover and perform the switch over and open it. So uh, whenever you are, uh, you open a database, 
uh, forward all connection to the Oracle Cloud Machine. And if you see that it doesn't work properly for, for any reason and you are not able to find out that reason, you will be able to go back by just performing the switch or back to your on-premise database and uh, find, uh, find the problem, find the solution and just switch over back again. Uh, next, ASM to non-ASM conversion. So whenever you provision, I mean, in, in, you can provision two node rack database in the database cloud service. So uh, it is limited. I mean, the DBAS is limited up to two nodes cluster. And uh, when you provision a rack database, uh, you are provided with two ASM disk groups, uh, data and FRA. And all data files will reside on the AFS. Uh, and there's an AFS mount points, uh, like u slash u01, u02, u03. And the data files are stored in ACFS. So if you want to store a database data files in ACFS and you are using different disk groups in the, in the on-premise. So when you try to take an Arman backup and restore the backup to the, uh, to the Oracle Cloud machine, uh, data files will have, uh, will have uh, that disk group will contain a disk group name. So in this case, it's better to rename all data files uh, when you restore the database by using uh, set new name for data file command or alter database rename file command and rename the files from the ASM to ACFS. So we can use also sub -STR and NSTR functions uh, in order to, uh, to rename all data files. So when you rename data files, they will rename to they will be renamed to U02 or U03 or or or, uh, or the different mount points. So then you run to the cloud machine and run the switch data file all command to uh, to, uh, to to change the data file names in the, in the, in the control file, recover database, and open database in the result logs option. Uh, the next step is uh, to migrate database using Golden Gate replication. And this is the best way to uh, migrate database uh, from on-premise to Oracle Cloud with a minimal downtime. So uh, actually, Golden Gate is used to, to extract and replicate data from one database to a different database. And uh, mostly, it is used to replicate uh, to replicate your data. Uh, and there are a lot of different config replication configurations that can be used with the Golden Gate, like unidirectional or bidirectional, or uh, you can use the peer-to-peer, -peer, or you can use a broadcast to uh, to create a replication that will broadcast your change that will uh, replicate your change from one source to a different sources or you can use a consolidation configuration that consolidate change from different sources to one single database, or you can use cascading configuration to cascade a change from one database to a different database and from the second database uh, to uh, different data sort, the databases. So uh, actually the Golden Gate is a replication tool, but uh, you can use it and it's better to use it for, uh, for the uh, for, for upgrade and migration. So whenever you, uh, it's totally platform independent and version dependent. You can uh, configure the Golden Gate between 10G and 11G, between Linux and OS, Linux and Windows OS or SolarOS and HP UX. Uh, so first of all, you have to perform an initial load. You perform an initial load uh, of, the, of your on-premise database to Oracle Cloud. Then you uh, configure uh, the replication. So, uh, so you have to run alter database and implement the log data, uh, and then execute the following script to create the required objects for the Golden Gate. And after that, you uh, create an extractor uh, and create a replication between two databases, between on-premise and Oracle Cloud, uh, either on uh, on object level or on schema level level or on database level. So. Uh, after after having a database, uh, after after initially loading the database, you I mean even before loading initial before performing an initial load of the database, you have to uh, configure the replication and start uh, start having the storing the change into the Golden Gate replication log files. So after uh, having the initial load, 
you start the replication and it will apply all changes of the that happened on the on-premise database to Oracle Cloud Machine. So after that, uh, when when you see that the, the two databases are in in replicated mode, then you stop the connections to the Oracle on, to the to the on-premise database and move the connections to the Oracle Cloud Machine. So it will it's like near zero near zero downtime. Next and the last option is to use uh, to use uh, I mean to migrate the single instance to the Oracle Rack database. So you, you might have a single instance on-premise database, and you might be asked to move it to the two-node Oracle Rack in the, in, the, in the Oracle Cloud. So in order to provision a Rack database in Oracle Cloud, uh, choose the software edition like as Enterprise Edition External Performance and database type as database clustering with Rack, and it will create two-node Rack database. So next. Uh, create a password file and create an initialization or a file, I mean, parameter file. Start the instance in no mount mode. Just back up the database, on-premise database, and move the uh, the backups to the cloud machine and duplicate the duplicate the target database. Uh, the, 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 the steps are same, but uh, if you provision the rack database, uh, you I mean, when you move the single instance to rack, you have to disable uh the rack feature in the in, in the target side in the cloud instance uh by uh, having cluster database parameter set to false and after the migration after you after you migrate the database you uh you change you edit you, you modify the rack related parameters in the parameter file which are instance number thread undo table space uh, for a second instance and and the read log files for the second instance. So you create a new under table space. You add uh, and enable. You add a new read log files uh, to the new thread uh, of the second instance. Enable that thread. Then enable the cluster database option by setting setting it to true. And then register rack instance with the CRS by uh, using server control add database server control add instance uh, commands. And that's it. Your single instance state on-premise database is converted to a uh, rack database in the Oracle Cloud. So uh, the final approach to on-premise migration to Oracle Cloud is to use the data pump. <laughs> you can use the data pump only for the small databases. And if the database uh, doesn't require, I mean, requires a downtime. You can get a downtime from the management, go with a data pump. It is platform and version dependence, and no extra managing skills are required. The next step is using transportable table spaces. The next option is using transportable table spaces, and it's faster than a data pump, but it requires part of the downtime. So uh, if you're not allowed to get the part of the downtime as well, and putting table space in the region only mode, Go with the transportable test space with incremental updated backups for the huge database for the big size databases. Um, it uh, it will you will have a minimal downtime, and you will move only specific table spaces, and no extra administration skills are required. I mean, re require. I mean, uh, some administration extra administration skills are required if even. Uh, Mostly, if you deal with uh, with a big database, so you have to use XT convert script uh, in order to uh, to speed up the the process. Next, you can use duplicate database to duplicate the clone the database from uh, from one platform to a different platform with the same Indian format, or create a standby database and perform the switch over. And if you see that that, that uh, the performance is slow, you can switch over back again, solve the problem, and perform the next switch over. But the ending format must be saved. And the best option is to use the Golden Gate replication. It is, it is like the near zero downtime, or like we can call it no downtime. It is totally platform and version independence, but it requires extra administration skills. You have to, even uh, mostly when you deal with the, uh, with the replication uh, that you configure on the object level, uh, so uh, that's why it takes some time to to replicate to to configure the replication, but it is like a near zero downtime. 
Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you for uh, for the opportunity, and thank you for being with me today. Uh, if you want to get uh, more information on cloud migrations, on my uh, cloud research, uh, make sure to uh, make sure to check my blog. And there are a lot of cloud-related video tutorials in oraclevideotutorials.com webpage. Okay, I'm done, Francisco. Is there any questions?